All right, welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us here on Morning Live. Now, it was around this time back in 1977 that uh, anti-apartheid activist Steve Biko was beaten and tortured in police custody. Although he had been arrested numerous times before, in September his injuries subsequently led to his death on the 12th of this very same month. Today, Azanian People's Organization, Azapo, will commemorate his death at uh, the now Hosimampuru Correctional Center in Pretoria. That is where he died. Joining us now is the president of Azapo in the district, Tukwani. Tukwani, good morning to you and thank you so much for joining us here on Morning Live. Uh, good morning, Palisa, and uh, the listeners of uh, Morning Live. Thank you so much for coming through. Now, it's been 40 years um, since the death of Steve Biko, and he, he's left us so uh, much in uh, legacy. How important is it for us to commemorate his life? Unfortunately, uh, the country did not continue with this, that legacy. That legacy would have put us somewhere else by now. But that's very important because for the past 40 years, every year, Azapo has made sure that it does commemorate. And uh, 40 years down the line, mm. and with what is happening in the country, we must remember his teachings. The psychological liberation, the inferiority and superiority complex of uh, people in the country, um, what you see in the street with the students, what you see people doing to each other, black people doing to each other. Mm. Now the shootings. And we say all should not have been in vain with what Steve, Steve Biko had preached, that uh, we have to have our own black solidarity, but for the sake of the country, not only for the black people, for everybody else, mm -hmm. that uh, we should have had that, but also that we must care for each other. Remember during the times of SASO and PPC, we were students at universities, and we said we are first black children before we invest in students, yeah. because we have to care for the ordinary people in the townships and everywhere else in the yeah. rural areas. So you've mentioned quite a number of incidents that we have seen uh, you know, playing out here in South Africa. So do you basically believe that uh, South Africa has shifted away from his belief of black consciousness? He must be shaking in his grave. He must be turning, not only him, Apetla Mohapi, Abram Tiro, Sobukwe, for the kind of things that they have died for. You remember they put their lives, they are all so that uh, we can have a better country. This is what he says, that somewhere in the distant horizon we will bestow upon this country, Azania, South Africa, a, something that can make us proud, a more humane face. What you see can never be described as a humane face. Mm. And uh, condolences to Makaka. This is very unfortunate. A young fellow who, for whatever reason, he belonged to whatever organization, but does not deserve to die like this. Yeah. for really wanting to improve the lives of black people. Mm. We, when people start eating each other's flesh, what, what, what sort of thing is that? Mm. When people are raping young children, grand old ladies, and uh, now takes the violence, just the mangal moose, lots of things that are not right. Disturbing I don't think, incidents. I don't think that's what we, he would have been proud but to as, see. But as, as Azapo, um, how are you taking this baiting forward? Listen, the, the reason that we have camped and I must point out that very clearly, a lot of organizations get formed, especially these days for parliament. And once they don't get into parliament or out of parliament, then they fizzle out, they die. We have camped. And the reason why we have camped, we knew at some point things would stable down. You know, it's very difficult to preach to people who are at a party on Christmas Day and tell them that, you know, God is going to come and Jesus Christ wants to save them. They usually continue with the party. But there's a time for sobering, and there is a time now. A lot of people are now sobering, and Azapo says, let that message come back. Yeah. We could have done better in the past. Conditions were such that people in 1994 thought they had arrived and uh, sort of relaxed. Probably we're also to blame on that because you don't want to put fingers in one direction. We're also thinking that we play the role of saying, okay, let's relax, let's enjoy our freedom. Mm -hmm. But the freedom that uh, we have died for, people have died for, that have struggled for, is not what we see now. But how, how are you planning to fix the situation? We, 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 we don't have the entire solution. We have to work with people. Most importantly, the black consciousness message. Yeah. Black men, you are on your own. Black men, take the cudgels into your own hands. And uh, let's meet as communities. So Azapo, besides also wanting to have resources in parliament, that can assist in a big way. Uh, because people say, okay, we can hear what you are saying. Are you in Parliament? But we say, no, no, Parliament is just one arena. 
Let us continue to be in schools, in churches, as we have done now. We have actually written to the SACC to say, this week, please dedicate your sermons to the life of Steve Biko. We have written to Safa. We say, Safa, when you play soccer this time, please observe a moment of silence. Yeah. But in another way, uh, having to hold workshops, talk to people, preach the message of being proud of uh, identifying yourselves and the message that Steve Biko has actually died for. So this is part of the kind of things that we do. We're no longer in arms struggle. Mm -hmm. We're no longer in a situation where we can force people to do certain things. But we have to bring a voice that is sobering to the people and giving them hope. Yeah. And that is the message of Black Consciousness. All right. And talk to us about uh, the commemorations at the Hossi Mamburu today. And you were telling me of air that actually you have um, a whole lineup for the entire month. As I live here, I'll be going to the Hossi Mamburu prison to go and lead a uh, service at Hossi Mamburu in Pretoria. We have an international guest, Professor Mulifi Asante, who's also going to join us and address us at the Khosimampur, where we continue to ask the government, the correctional services, to dedicate that cell where Steve Biko died in. That it must be a shrine and it must be a cell, that, uh, a place that can be uh, that of dignity. We'd also be going to Port Elizabeth on uh, the 12th. Remember, Biko died on the 12th. Yeah. And the Professor Asante will be addressing the students in the PE. We have already done the footsteps. We came from Cape Town, where he used to be. We went to Ginsberg. We went to Grahamstown, where he was arrested. Mm -hmm. And we continue for the year to mark all the steps or footsteps where he stepped, uh, st stepped on. But and in also, recognition of that. Are you also perhaps working um, hand in hand with, with the government? Because I remember it was during Human Rights Day in, in the Eastern Cape when President Jacob Zuma said that government will actually, you know, um, work together with the Biko family to make sure that um, they take forward um, the, his commemoration. Well, a little bit offside by the president, but uh, fortunately we were able to fix that to say, let us, as the government, use resources, not only to commemorate leaders from one section of the liberation struggle. Let us look at Sobuko as well. Let us look at Biko. And uh, fortunately, this time around, the Department of Arts and Culture, the Minister Natim Teto approached us and then written a letter to me to say, can we do it together? Mm -hmm. We're supposed to go and uh, address on the 12th with the president, apparently it's out of the country, but we are doing a colloquium together with the department and there's going to be speeches along the side yeah. of black consciousness. Right. And we welcome that because you have been accusing government to say, but how do you ignore a figure like Steve Biko? So now going forward, we have Steve Biko, CAT Machinery must come on board, uh, a Sobuka must come, yeah. and every other person who has made a contribution in our struggle yeah. must never be ignored. All they right. must be remembered Just for that. a quick one on this one. We've seen the reopening of an inquest into Ahmed Timol's death. Do you perhaps, as Azapo, considering you know, reopening the inquest into his death because there was uncertainty surrounding his death? Well, when you plant the seed into my mind, we are bound to take it. <laughs> We're also thinking of others. You see, Steve Biko is a big name. Yeah. But there's Matthew Mabella he is said to have jumped from the, from the 12th floor or 11th floor of John Foster Square. Nobody knows about Matthew Mabellani, but we were there when Matthew Mabellani was pushed uh, from that. So those, they, are, they are not the only names. There are quite a number of names mm -hmm. of uh, people who died in dubious circumstances. But you are looking into we that. We want to, uh, to look into that. All right. No, Ndate Tukwani, thank you so much and all the best with all your programs. Thank you, Thank you, Palisa. Thank you very much. Well, there you have it. That's a strike to Kwan. He's the president of Azapo, talking to us about the 40th commemoration of the late Steve Biko. Let's take a break here on Morning Live.